Hi everyone, uh, I'm giving a replacement video for the one that I did the other day. I was so disgusted with it, I deleted it. This you'll just see in here. Um, plants are not bad at, at the moment, coming into life as you can see. It's just going to be a quickie. I've been moving some of the other plants about in the uh, the Apantia and the Garvey house and covered in glotches horrible things. There's a few of the plants in the first uh, warm box propagator. You've seen these before but some of them are slowly coming into leaf. As I say the, the battle is to get them rooted because when you buy these plants unfortunately they don't have any roots. I can show you on the next one the two plants here. Uh, you've got Euphorbia I can locate it. Uh, all right, it's so bright in I can't see the camera. Um, yeah, Bupelia folia and Trichodenia, uh, both euphorbias. Both, not a scrap of root on them. I'm trying to root them in uh, this um, volcanic type mixture. I know you can use a certain cat, uh, yeah, a certain cat litter. I believe Tesco's do one. It's, I understand it's in, in a pink container or bag but I've, I've never done this yet. But if you do grow these in this plant, remember there's no, there's, there's no ways of holding fertilizer in the stuff so you've got to water with a fertilizer. What I use is this stuff you can see here. It's, um, it's Kempac which I would recommend covered in water well it's not inside it's on the side of the water plant there is Kempac uh, the best place to get it is online I tend to use online shopping more that's my main shopping source now um, there's some of the other plants in there you've got the Pachypodium Namaquanum that's still in leaf at the moment. So that unusual looking plant, well mind you a lot of them unusual, but that one at the back there pointing to it is another euphorbia and that hasn't done anything yet. It costs a, an arm and a leg by the way. But I've got to ease up on the on buying things. I want to save a bit of money for the holidays, which I'm looking forward to. Looking forward to really well, you know. Yeah, anyway, move on to the cacti. At the back there, you've got the tephro cactus, the puntias. Remember, those so and so's have glotchids. There's a larger, uh, larger padded of puntia that's a. Uh, Pantia siculata, which means needle like spines. A siculata. Some uh, cultivar agaves, I think they are, yeah. Two there. I've noticed the plant in the front there, the Pantia, that's starting to show some signs of growth. Well, more than showing, it's doing some growth. This is quite a good time because a lot of the plants, as you can see, are in bloom. You've got disco cactus in bloom, uh, another lophophora in bloom. I'm hoping I'm pointing it in the right direction because this greenhouse is so bright you hardly see the screen. Lophophora, another one in the front there. I rather like lophophoras. One we're looking at now is Ubermania. Ubermania named after Mr. Uberman of Switzerland and Pectinifera. Pectin means a comb. Referring I think to the fact that it's like the teeth of, of a comb. I think that's what it, what it means but definitely it means comb like Pectinifera. There's a few more Apantias, Tephracactus. 
they do tend to grow okay in here. Uh, I've had a couple of losses to be expected, I suppose, really. That is this one, I, I don't know why it's done that. This is um, Euphorbia Susani. I've tried everything to clean off that blinking white stuff. And it's also on another one. Both these came from the same source, so I'm a bit wary now where I get my plants from. It is a gamble. I don't care what anyone says, it's a gamble. Okay, the commoner stuff that you'd get from the garden centre, you're probably all right with those. There's another punter, I think that's Santa Rita. Yeah, I believe that's Santa Rita, I think it is anyhow. Um, if you want on there. Got Lichtenbergia principis, cacti with the long tubercles. I managed to get some of the Lowiis through. There's Euphorbia, um, Euphorbia Echeveria Lowiii. They're a tricky plant to grow, they don't like excess water. A couple more Puntias. You've got Tephra Cactus Geometricus. They are obviously very slow. I picked these up last year and um, they've done nothing but it looks like the one on the left hand side is producing which looks like perhaps two new pads. I will give them a bigger pot. On there we've got Ariocarpus retusus, that was a seed ra raised plant. That was one I won at um, the local auction. I went in there, I said, oh, I never win. And <laughs> blow me down, I won the first ticket. Mind you, the first for a long, long time. At the back there, we've got Crashula pyramidalis. That is a slow grower, but I'm pleased with it. It's um, done quite well, he's doing quite well. The little grains you see on top though is not top dressing. It's good old slug bait. Because where I live, there's lots of slugs. And they're a curse. A real curse. Moving further on. Some old plants. Uh, you've got here. This plant's new to me. I'm hoping. I haven't checked that it's got a root. It's Euphorbia Len Newtoni. Now I know Len of many years ago. Uh, he's in Nairobi, is he? He's, he's certainly in one of the countries in the uh, continent of Africa. A very clever man. And I have known him since I was virtually a kid. As I said before, I was a kid once. Some say I still am. Um, probably am. There's a grafted plant there. That's... Um, an astrophytum, astro meaning star-like, and look what we have here. This is my horse crippler, a kind of cactus. I always forget the name. Tech sensors, a kind of cactus. Tech sensors. With that name, it must come from Texas, and the common name is horse crippler. And when you look at it. got very very strong spines and I suppose they could cripple a horse but look look in the middle there it's going to flower so when the flower comes out I'll take a picture of it shouldn't be too long surprising how quick they pop up the um, aloe variegators have virtually finished, well, have, have almost finished their flowering. We won't look at the lithops. There's still a sore point with me at the moment. And rotten compost sold by a very well-known garden centre, which I'm not allowed to name them. But they are allowed to poison my, I mean swore then, poison my plants. 
which they have done. So I would say to anyone, uh, this is obviously in England, if you buy compost, don't buy it from a god uh, from a do-it-yourself shop or store, um, because it could be the same contaminated stuff that I got, and it's caused me nothing but trouble. Go to a proper garden centre. I think you'll pay the same price, but at least in the garden centre they do know what they well, hopefully know what they're talking about. There's my other uh, other Lowy eye. But they're very tricky. Avoid, if possible, getting water at the base of the leaves. That would be a very quick way of um, seeing the plant off. There's that um, euphorbia again, Susanne, with that white stuff on it. I've tried everything to get rid of it. And I'm blowed if I'm going to uh, if I'm going to remove any of the growth or heads because it would just ruin the plant. And let's look at the plants at the top there. We've got some more tephrocactus of Puntias. I believe that first one is Invicta. Look at all, all the new growth on it. I love it here. This greenhouse does get a lot of sun. And I'm well pleased. I moved a couple of these uh, about because they were touching one another. I try, if possible, to not have them touching because they do have some nasty spines. And as I can tell you now, my hand, I've just moved a larger puntier out of the other house and uh, I'm afraid the air was a little bit blue at the time. It was definitely a little bit blue at the time. And I ended up being covered in glotchids, which are nasty barbed spines, or they appear at the base of, of the spines that the puntiers have got. And they are horrible. You have to get them out with a tweezer, or if your fingernails are any good, those. I quickly pass over the mesems. I will stay a stop on the on there. I do like my uh, um, Maria Fighter Mayuri, as I said before, this was named after the same gentleman, Pastor G. Mayer. Um, they do well, these do. I think it's probably because they do get a lot of sun. This um, conifillum, don't look too close at. It was covered, I'm ashamed to say, in mealy bug. I just didn't notice it. I suppose when you get to my age, the eyes are not as good as they should be. Although I've had my cataracts done, so I can't use that as an excuse. But I used to counteract, because you can't get a decent insecticide now. You can't buy malathion. You can't buy Fowler's uh, mealy bug destroyer. You can't buy Rogor. The stuff you buy now is basically crap. So what you can do is mix your own get some washing up liquid fairy is quite a good one mix it mix it with water add a chinosol tablet that's a uh, 8 hydroxyquinoline sulfate you can buy it online through a dealer in germany because i don't think it's available over here They'll probably try and stop that as well. They're trying to, I believe they're trying to stop slug bait. Soon you'll have your plants just being eaten by all, all and sundry or killed off. But anyway, we got on there to say my uh, conophyllums, mitrophyllums, and um, I'm hoping I've killed off all the mealybugs. What it tends to do, it, it suffocates them. What a lovely thought. Um, and they die. Sorry, I'm not normally nasty like that, but you know, you have to be a bit hard on certain things. And the plant we're looking at now is Philobolus resurgens. And it's got uh, seed pods. But before you all say, oh, that's good, they're probably hybrid because I've only got one of these that are in bloom. 
the other one at the back there isn't doing that well. Well, it's doing well, but it hasn't it hasn't obliged. Yeah, I'm nearly done in here. Um, yeah, there's the lithops. And yeah, I'll show you what this bloody pest does. It makes me swear, it really does. See that white stuff on there? Well, I cleaned that all off last year. This is why they're a bit lush, because I use the, uh, the power of the hose. And this year, it's come back. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is using a John in his compost from a very well-known garden centre which I'm not allowed to name but as I said before I'm allowed to buy it and allow it to kill my plants I tell you what I nearly gave the hob I nearly gave the hobby up I do a lot on lamps I suppose my two main hobbies well I've got too many hobbies um, I do collect vintage light bulbs which is not as unusual as it sounds uh, my best friend does the same and uh, we spend a lot of time going through eBay contacting each other what we do constantly and letting each other know what is on eBay do we want to buy them do we want to leave them there so that in itself it is a very good hobby but linked to that yeah I do the certain antiques as well barometers telephones uh, old radios in fact next month in May we've got the uh, communications fair this is held up north near I think it's in Warwickshire which I must go to that because that is very good and in fact it was there I bought a whole lamp collection all right it was, well I say it wasn't cheap from what I got it was cheap and uh, I'm well pleased with them so as I say, the hobbies keep me alive. I think if I didn't have a hobby, I'd crawl in a corner and drop dead. But it's, you know, it's, rein, it's reinvigorated certain things. But as I say, these I was bitterly disappointed with. Um, even spraying with um, the mix I use, it doesn't seem to harm the plants. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem, seem to harm that bloody white stuff. So remember, buy any compost from a good, reputable garden centre, not a do-it-yourself place. What it is, they use, or I think, they use household waste mixed in to make the compost up. And you're basically buying a load of crap. Now, sorry if crap seems a strong word, it's not was named after a gentleman who made modifications to the lavatory system Thomas Crapper and um, in a way it's an insult to him because they were very good loos um, I haven't got one of their loos but it, if I did it's they're very nice then you'd have the people saying oh they use too much water you can't win now you just can't win and as I said before, without getting too political, I feel I've lived my life, and in a way, it's been quite an enjoyable life. Okay, it's been trouble. You know, I've had troubles through life. Um, I suppose having unusual hobbies doesn't help. And all I can really do now is to advise uh, friends what you know how to try and get on in life because, uh, say, they they're starting out and I think they're going to find things hard which is a pity but anyhow all this dull and all this dull and gloom I mustn't do that I must say it's marvellous time never had it so good remember one of the one of the uh, the parties government party used to say that you never had it so good yeah, I feel that I have had it very good. And uh, as I say, my aim is to 
particularly help where I can and I've made a starter on that which is another story anyhow that's going to do for now any questions please ask I will try and give you an answer um, sorry I keep going on about the bad compost but I'm doing it for a reason I nearly lost all my plants through it and um, if it wasn't for you kind people saying don't give it up I haven't but it was very near I gave it up as I say with my other hobbies I could quite easy devote my time to say the antiques the uh, light bulbs and um, yeah it'd be quite good but anyhow that's that's what has happened in here so hopefully uh, you'll be enjoying this, this video any comments as I say please make and uh, I'll try and get back to you if you've got any questions on light bulbs <laughs> always ask me um, as I we do this a lot now with with the lamps we're always looking on eBay you can still get bargains out there got to let all the secrets go now aren't I but you know look at the right place plants on eBay can be quite expensive um, they really can be and um, I was looking at, at um, that's uh, an item which was being sold by German eBay of a what I call a common lamp socks I mean it's socks it, it's a low pressure sodium lamp or natrium and um, they wanted a thousand pounds over I couldn't believe it had it have been April the 1st I'd have said it was an April the 1st um, thing but it wasn't and that was the price it was going for I said blimey so as I say we do look at eBay the whole time needs to say neither of us are going to buy it over here they're about between 20 and 30 well, that'll give you an idea anyhow I'm talking a while I know I love talking um, so I'm going to shut up now and get this up on YouTube once again thanks for watching and uh, I don't know what don't know what I'm going to put up next. I might do Jean's greenhouse next. Um, I may do that next. Anyhow, once again, catch you all later, and um, hope you're enjoying this video and the nice weather because in England it's very nice weather. And also, where my friend is now in, is he's, he's on holiday in in um, yeah in Germany and the weather's good there as well so it looks like it's hopefully set fair. Anyway I'm going to shut up so uh, thanks again. Thank you.